athlete in college sports who has savored his career more. You can just feel it when you get up Saturday morning. Something special is about to happen. You hear people talking about they want to be NFL football players. I want to be a college football player in the SEC. So I'm definitely you know, kind of living that dream. It's just since I was 8, 9, 10 years old, having those pictures in my mind of what I wanted to do, and now I'm doing it. Everything's kind of been in a rush since I've been here. I played early as a freshman, kind of got thrown to the fire a little bit. For Tennessee, the quarterback will be number 16, Peyton Manning. 6'5", 207 freshman from New Orleans. First game, nervous, extremely nervous. I uh, wasn't ready to go into that game. Coach Fulmer told me I'm going in, and I just I wanted to say, no, don't put me in. I'm just not quite ready. This will be Manning. Back to throw. Across the middle, pass complete. Ball down at the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the oh, 45. Most exciting play I've been around since I've been here. Manning rolling to the right side. Motion to throws down into the end zone, and it is touchdown! That was fun. You know, those are the kind of plays you, you, you see on highlights. You see you know, how that happen. You, you can't really explain it. Playing in the big games, you know, on TV, just the rivalries, the traditions between each school. So it has been everything I wanted it to be. Peyton Manning leads the Tennessee Volunteers against Vanderbilt next. Well, thanks so much tonight. The number nine volunteers come calling against their cross-state rivals, the Commodores of Vanderbilt. And quite frankly, it's a night that even the Ducks don't care for. We are under a flash flood warning until 2.30 in the morning. Very wet conditions. But the biggest question tonight in the volunteer state is, is this the last regular season game that Peyton Manning will be in uniform as a Tennessee volunteer? And Mike Godfrey, he goes up against a defense tonight in Vanderbilt that has been in the top 25 all year long, and they have played extremely well against some good teams. They've been tough to figure out. Ron, this is a very good defense. Starting the year against Notre Dame, they played well enough on the defensive side of the ball to win that football game. They were beaten 14-7. to Played very well against Alabama and then closed out against Florida. A very good Florida team held them to 125 yards total offense and one touchdown in the fourth quarter. So their defense can play. But another question is whether the offense, offense can sustain enough field position, move the chains enough to keep the ball away from Tennessee's offense. Because if you give Peyton Manning enough shots with that football, he's going to put a lot of points on the board. No question about that. Let's go down to the sideline. Kellen Winslow, tell us about the wet conditions. <laughs> Ron is very wet down here. All day long, it's been from light to heavy. Right now, a light shower. It's going to get heavier throughout the night. It's going to continue throughout the entire ball game. Who might that favor? Believe it or not, Vanderbilt. Remember yesterday, Colorado, Nebraska, four times the ball's put on the ground and Colorado recovered, allowed them to stay in the ball game, a close ball game with Nebraska. Vanderbilt needs those type of turnovers tonight to stay in this ball game with a very powerful Tennessee team. All righty, Kellen, thanks so much. Don Gallardo standing by to kick it off for the Black shirted and uniformed Commodores of Vanderbilt. Mark Levine is back deep for Tennessee. And this annual grudge match is underway. He's going to go about nine yards deep in the end zone, and he will be unable to return it. So here are the starters for the Volunteers. Of course, number 16. He'll have behind him Chester Ford and tailback Jay Graham. The wide receivers, they're very good. And in fact, we'll see a number tonight, but particularly Nash and Kent. Dustin Moore, good hands and also a good blocker. The offensive line, this has been somewhat of a puzzle for the Volunteers all year. Trey Teague has been moved from tackle. He's now playing center, probably the most consistent of that offensive group. Manning going to throw on first down. Gets the screen out of the flat. It's Joey Kent. And he's going to be stopped after a gain of maybe one. Defensively for Vanderbilt. Stallworth, Shuckman, Hill, and Boykin. Shuckman probably the bell cow, but he does have an injured ankle. The linebackers, they're good ones, particularly Jamie Duncan, number 49 in the middle. You'll hear his name quite a bit tonight. And the Commodores like their cornerbacks, Chavis and also Fred Vinson. Chavis a little bit nicked in this ballgame, but they like him on man-man coverage. They roll the pocket. You can see the pursuit. Manning simply throws it away wisely. It's going to be third down. And Ainsley Battles comes up with big pressure. Ron, the key when you look at Tennessee tonight, because they're going against Woody Woodenhofer, the defensive coordinator for Vanderbilt, he brings a pro-style scheme to the ballpark tonight and tries to match up personnel groupings. But what he wants is most is third and long yardage. If he can hold Tennessee on first down, which they did this series, and get him into third and long, and then he'd become the guessing game. 
You can hear the wind whipping through our microphones upstairs. The rain has slowed a little bit, but the wind could be a problem as far as throwing, Mike. They show blitz, and then they come off of it. Manning here in the flat. Nice job by Graham to bring it in, but he's going to be stopped after a very short game. And it's one, two, three, and out. And this is a tune that Coach Fulmer doesn't like to hear early on. Well, that's the kind of series you want Vanderbilt on defense. But now the change of possessions, we'll see what Vanderbilt can do on offense because that has really been the weakness of this football team. Binion, you see his average. His longest is 62. And he has a crossing win that he's kicking into. Alba Duke is the single man back. Good driving spiral into this wind. Nice job over the 40 to the 45-yard line. 48 yards in the kick and 15 on the return. This is the way they'll start offensively. Damian Allen, number 17 out of Strongsville, Ohio. It is incumbent upon him to have a good ball game tonight for Vanderbilt to stay in this thing. The wide receivers, Yoder and Winkler. In fact, the first four are all freshman receivers. And the offensive line up front, the Graffenreed, Saltzman, Jacobs and also Binion of Bindam, I beg your pardon. Anguiano is the center. As they run on first down, they'll have one yard. And let's take a look at the defense for Tennessee. Coleman, Duff, Buxton gets the start tonight along with Jonathan Brown. The linebackers. 47, Tyrone Hines in the middle is the guy that they look to. He leads the team in tackles with 101. And in the secondary, volunteers like their corners. Ray Alston and also Terry Fair, they do an outstanding job for them. Second and short, running play again. Hit as he picks up maybe one ty hines is there to put the stop on him ron this is an offense really it's been non-existent all year averaging only two yards rushing the football in every attempt they're 111th on offense uh, the last uh, total yards 210 points are averaging 11.5 so to me to what they have to do tonight they have to generate some offense but not lose the football game either at least keep the ball on the ground keep the clock moving and let your defense play on the other side of the 20 30 yard line Damian Allen said to us yesterday, we need to set a tempo in this ball game, and just as Mike said. We need to hold on to the football and not put our defense out all night. Drills his pass, nobody there. You could see his receiver, Yoder, had slipped on his cut over the middle. And with that, the punting team will come on for Vanderbilt. Well, a good series for Tennessee's defense, and that's not what Vanderbilt wanted to do on offense. But when you look at Vanderbilt, Ron, they've had six rushing touchdowns this year and four passing touchdowns. So, again, they have to find a way to play field position against Tennessee. Merritt Angel standing back to punt, waits for the snap at the 32-yard line. over the top of this one but with the win there back inside the 10 yard line and he is going to be covered in black and gold 46 yards in the kick and it's going to be one on the return so let's take a timeout Peyton Manning about to come out for his second offensive series Well, you can see the rain has uh, subsided a bit, although it is still raining as we look up into the lights across the way. But this is supposed to be with us for the entire evening. Thank goodness the temperature is not unbearable. It's in the 50s. Play action gets that quick out screen. Footing is not good, and he goes down. Mike Tirico. We're on this McDonald's breakaway. We check in on Georgia Tech and Georgia in Athens. The dogs up three. Mike Bobo, top side, 47 yards. Juan Daniels. If Georgia wins, each team will end up with a five and six record. Right now, the dogs lead by nine. Well, the dogs needed that bite, I can tell you. After what happened with the upset last week to Ole Miss. Manning changing the play at the line of scrimmage. 
goes to the kicker inside a handoff. That's Chester Ford. And that actually is going to be the longest gainer of the ball game because they only picked up one yard of the opening series. As you look at his numbers for the season, 65, almost 66 percent at over 3,100 yards. Ron, coming into this third down, Tennessee last year in the game against Vanderbilt was 3 of 15 on third down conversions. Had zero success last time. Gets it away and well overthrown. McCullough is the man that he was looking for, and this is going to be the second straight third and out. And Mike, we talked about Vanderbilt and how they confuse you, and right now they got Tennessee confused. Well, again, Woody Woodenhofer, it's the it's the pro package when you look at when you look at the secondary right here. They're showing a defense of two deep, and then they get out and they bail out and they get Peyton Manning in a bad checkoff. Benyon, nice kick into this uh, wind and rain. No fair catch. Yes, Alvin Duke will make it, and that is just across the 45. So Vanderbilt gains as far as field position. Well, do you have ESPN News yet? If you don't, you're missing the first 24-hour all-sports news network from your only source for the best news and information, ESPN. ESPN pools all its resources to give you not only scores and highlights, but in-depth, reliable coverage of breaking news. To get ESPN News, call your local cable operator or satellite provider and ask for ESPN News. Five, ten... That will be the initial first down of this football game, and it goes with the Commodores of Vanderbilt. Donovan is the man who found the big open hole. Ron, against Florida, Jason Donovan had a good ball game. He finished with a career-high 88 yards on 23 carries, but he lost six fumbles in the first six games and kind of lost his starting position. But he runs up in here very hard, gets tackled in the secondary. Good game for Vanderbilt. But Dalhauer said yesterday that they will work extremely hard on the running game and that it has to come up big tonight. And they have caught Tennessee jumping offside. You see Vanderbilt signaling that it's going to be against the Volunteers. drawn offside and let's check in again with Mike Tarico. Brought up in Syracuse down 25. Syracuse showing a glimmer of hope. A five play 99 yard drive. Donovan McNabb scrambles and up top Daryl Daniels 70 yard score. Syracuse got the ball back but McNabb was just intercepted by the Kings. Well, that one surprises me, Mike. I thought particularly playing at the Carrier Dome that uh, Syracuse might have the nod in that one. They have a tough time against the Kings. Quarterback draw. Allen will take it inside the 40. Craig King will finally put the hit on him. When you look at Tennessee tonight, Ron, uh, I know we were talking to Doug Dickey before the ball game, and when Florida lost to Florida State, it appears now Tennessee may be out uh, of the uh, mix in the Alliance Bowl, and so they, they may need something else to happen yet tonight. But look a little bit flat coming out in this ball game now. They had a tough call against these guys last year, so you figure with that close ball game last year, they'd be ready to play it tonight. Now, last year's ball game was 12 7. Tennessee won it. Vanderbilt had, come on, Tennessee had 97 snaps in that ball game. Quick in pass. Did he catch it? Nope. Incomplete. Yoder couldn't hold on. Good coverage, but the way they're playing defense now, third and short, uh, you'd think they're going to punt the football, keep Tennessee and Peyton Manning in the hole. Fourth down at about two and a half, maybe three. Marion Angel with his second punch of the night. Terry Fair drops off. There with an 86-yard punt return against Arkansas earlier this year. Driving kick, got the wind behind him, and this one will go five yards deep into the end zone. So 40 yards on the kick, and let's take a timeout. 8-17 to play first period, no score.
Mike, not big numbers to open this ball game. What's Woody doing to it? Well, he's confusing Tennessee on first down, but let's just take a look and see some of the different things that Tennessee is seeing on offense. Too deep coverage by Vanderbilt. Then you come back the next play. Got a safety in center field. Different look. Then you come back on the next play, and all of a sudden they got the safety getting ready to come up and blitz, and you got bump and run coverage on the outside. So a lot of looks that Peyton Manning's looking at from Woody Woodenhofer. total of four offensive yards for Tennessee in the early going. Right up the middle, and there he is, Jamie Duncan. 4-6. He's a junior out of Wilmington, Delaware, and I told you we'll call his name a lot tonight, but he had 19 tackles earlier against Notre Dame. Well, Woody Woodenhofer said he's one of the most productive defensive players in the SEC, and he just meets Jay Graham right in the hole, and another first down play where Tennessee's not able to pick up any yardage. It plays right into Woody Woodenhofer's hands. No, he's the strongest guy on this Vanderbilt team is Duncan. That includes all the linemen. Grand left side ahead of steam. Five, six. Let's see where they're going to spot it down. It looked like Boykin got a hand on him. And they're going to say his knee touched it to 26. So it's going to be third down Tennessee. Still looking for their initial first down of the night. Ron, you're talking about Jamie Duncan. He is the strongest player on the team. But against Florida, he had 19 tackles, caused two fumbles, two sacks, recovered a fumble, and ran it in for a touchdown. So he had a uh, great ball game. You compare it to a runner who gains over 150 yards, a passer over 300 yards. Uh, just an outstanding uh, night. Line to make for the bottom tier at the 30. Quick looking pass, almost intercepted by Dereal Pinkland. Now when you show all these looks that you're showing to Tennessee, the key is that Vanderbilt believes in what Woody Woodenhofer is teaching. Again, now here comes the blitz again. Man coverage, bump and run. Here comes the blitz out of the secondary from the safety in the linebacker. It's not picked up, almost an interception by Dereal Pinkland. In fact, Jermaine Coleman almost made a serious error. He didn't continue toward the football and almost got it intercepted. Benyon, his third punt. Duke is the man back deep, and look at this. Takes a big Vanderbilt bounce. So, Vanderbilt's defense not only has confused right now, they're taking advantage of field position. Six fifty-one left in this opening quarter as the rain continues to come down here in Nashville. Ron, the best down for Vanderbilt to throw is first down. When you're not very good on offense, the best down is first down. Good heavens, what a hit. Corey Terry, a sophomore out of Warrington, North Carolina, was in the backfield and almost took the handoff. Trying to run a slow developing play, a little counter play, but Corey Terry, as you said, Ron, he was up the field. He ne there was no place for that ball to go. Both teams, uh, both defenses are just dominating on first down and forcing long yardage situations. Second down and a long 14. See Hines creeping up into the middle of your screen there. Will he come on the blitz? Yep, here he comes. They pick it up. Got a man, and he overthrows him. Wow, Winkler had gotten behind the secondary, the freshman out of Birmingham. You remember he had the big play against Florida, a fade route where he caught a, a touchdown pass. And, Ron, look, we might, you, we might as well, you, when you look at this thing, and when you look at Vanderbilt and you say, well, they're 111th in offense, they got a lot of freshmen playing. They're two wide receivers, Yoder mm -hmm. and Winkler are freshmen. Well, all, all four are actually. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and an offensive Lucas. linemen, they're playing with a couple freshmen starting in there. So this is a very young offensive football team that's going to get better for Rod Dahar. Infect Saltzman, a freshman. Jacobs, only a sophomore. Bynum is a freshman. And Barnett is a backup center. He's a freshman, and he plays a lot. Allen Setz has it all, and he dropped the football. O.J. Fleming, sophomore out of Franklin, Tennessee, had him, the ball hit him right in the hands. Well, they do a lot of shifting Vanderbilt on offense, and they sometimes can get you misplaced on defense. O.J. Fleming was right there in the scene, number 84, to make this catch, just couldn't hold on. And Vanderbilt is not taking advantage of field position, Ron. And nope. it's just a matter of time for Peyton Manning and his Tennessee offense. Well, they also have the win with them as well, as you look at Fair, fourth of the NCAA in returns. Merritt Angel 
gets his kick away. Harrell run away from it, and wisely so, into the end zone. Well, following this game at ESPN, we've got a hoop double header for you. Texas Tech at number 25, George Washington, mid at midnight, following Sports Center, the Great Alaska Shootout Championship, number eight, Kentucky, against the College of Charleston, fresh off their upset of number 21, Stanford, last night. Ron, a lot of times when you struggle, you go to two tight ends, you bring a second tight end in and start running the football. Now they're going to go to one back and move a tight end around. Let's see if they go to run the football. Ian Smith is a man who came across. You can see Tennessee snapped the ball, and Peyton Manning went down on one knee, and very quickly, the ball... Defense, five yards, still first down. The ball is moved up on the uh, infraction. 17 seasons in the National Football League. Four Super Bowl rings with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And was the head coach at Missouri uh, in the 80s? Boykin comes across, and uh, you could see the results. that Tennessee had put in the bank. They just uh, lost that deposit right there, didn't they? Well, it's the most productive play on first down so far, both sides. Picked up five yards on the penalty and lost five yards. Back to the 20. Five minutes, 48 seconds left in this opening quarter. And we've got a couple of goose eggs up there. In fact, Vanderbilt scored, scored first in this game last year. Smith steps up to make the tackle again. Short gain on Levine. It's good penetration and by the Vanderbilt defense. And one of the problems that Tennessee's had this year is an offensive line. They lost four out of five seniors of, off last year's offensive line. They've had some injuries this year. They've tried to move some people around that offensive line. And it hasn't played like the offensive lines of old of Tennessee's. Losing uh, Rito really hurt them as well. You see the corner sneaking up. Will he come on the blitz? Yes. And they go with the running play. They try to bounce it outside. And quick pursuit. Benson is out there to make the tackle quickly on Levine. We talked about earlier, Ron, and you talked about it in the lineups when you talked about the two corners. Corey Chavis, number four, and Freddie Benson, number one. These are both good cover corners that play good run support. What you want out of a corner is somebody who can blanket a receiver, but also can come up and make tackles on the outside. Freddie Vinson can do that. Mike, uh, Vinson is 4-3-5, and Chavis is 4-4, so you got better than adequate speed uh, at those two positions. Manning rolls the pocket on third down, back across the middle. It is tipped and almost intercepted as Duncan got a hand on it. But what Tennessee's trying to do with Peyton Manning is to get him out away from the blitz on third down. What he wouldn't offer, plan is working to this point. He could just get some, generate some offense to take advantage of this field position. Peyton Manning throwing again into coverage. Marcus Nash, their intended receiver, number 12. Boy, look at this. Duncan just actually suckered him. Stepped in front of Nash and almost made the intercept. This is Duke. Runs into his own man. Comes across the 45 and he's to the 47-yard line. 36 yards on the kick and eight on the return. Rod Dauhauer, the head coach in his second season here at Vanderbilt, trying to uh, build a football program here. Believes in throwing the football. Worked with Bill Walsh. Uh, was late with the Cleveland Browns, and uh, Bill Belichick was the head coach. He and Woody Woodenhofer both came to Vanderbilt from the Browns. Probably the most disappointed that uh, he has been, he said, was against Kentucky. They had opportunities to make the big plays, and then things like that happened to him. As Terry comes across, and Dunneman... Your running backs can't go anywhere when you get that kind of penetration. I mean, the whole thing is spoiled. No, I go back again, Ron. If you're going to throw the football, of course, this night is night. Not a, a perfect night to throw the football with the rain and the wind. But if you're going to throw it, if you're Vanderbilt, you have to throw it on first down. you got to take advantage of that and not be in second and long situations with this Tennessee defense. Corey Terry again with another good penetrating move. Tomacek, he just beat him. The tight end tried to block him and uh, couldn't do much with it. 
47 moving around. Here he comes and he makes the hit right in the middle. Backed up by a hit by Craig King and they'll stop it for a gain of about two and a half. Well, here's Rod Dauhauer's thinking right now because the way his defense is playing, he doesn't want to turn over. He doesn't want to fumble, doesn't want to sack, doesn't want the ball intercepted. He'd be just content to run the football, keep kicking it down the hole and making Tennessee go the distance and maybe hope that they turn it over. Because the defense has come close. They, they really times. have. They've come close to picking Peyton Manning off about two, three times. Now, you don't want to turn over if you're Vanderbilt right here. Donovan misses the block, and Allen gets knocked down by Coleman. First sack of the night. You can see Donovan, 42, coming over, trying to make the block, and uh, he was just beaten. Yeah, see the sack again. Look where they started to run. You talked about 46 yard lines where they started. Now they're back uh, the fourth and 21. Again, a sack. Damian Allen trying to sprint out. Gets picked off by Jeff Coleman. He was sacked seven times against Kentucky, nine times versus Ole Miss. So his offensive line has not given him good protection. Too many lookout blocks. Marin Angel waiting for the snap. Got a little 18 win behind him. They're coming after him. the 25-yard line. And Mike Tirico, let's check with you. Ron, today Syracuse has had a field goal block, allowed a kickoff and an interception return for touchdown, but they're still in contact with Miami on third down. Donovan McNabb rifles one to former quarterback Kevin Johnson at the point. Less than 10 minutes left, and Syracuse is down 11. Well, they may have gotten themselves in too big a hole, but they're capable, as you have seen in those last two plays we've Boy, they are capable, and here's a capable player right here, Peyton McNabb real slow but uh, give Woody Woodenhofer and his defensive personnel Duncan and that group uh, credit for what they've caused the problems for Peyton Manning you see him signaling Nash from the right side over to the left brings it complete more and more and he comes across the 36 to the 37 and I believe Tennessee has just gotten their first first down let's see what they mark it so at the 155 mark of the first period, Tennessee gets their initial first down. Justin Moore just hooking on an option route about 8 to 10 yards deep. Here comes the blitz. Gets this one complete. That is Marcus Nash, who did a nice acrobatic job of going up to make the catch. Not much in the way of yardage. Ron, here again, what you're seeing now is two plays in a row where you're going to get a little curl route, safe throw, again by Peyton Manning. Here's the blitz on man coverage. A little easy throw on this night because of the wet football. Throwing it outside, you throw it inside on the hook, hook route. The real Finkland, number 22, against Marcus Nash. About to go under one minute to play in this opening period. Quick out pass. Nash. To the 47-yard line, and Duncan will be credited with the tackle. They're close, but I don't think they got the first down. So Manning is the first Tennessee quarterback to pass for over 3,000 yards in a season. Tonight, he could top one of the top actually become one of the five top all-time sec passing seasons you see he needs what 82 yards to pass shane matthews for fourth 143 to pass danny werfel for third zire is second and zire actually is first if he got 402 he would surpass him at a timeout he's called so let's take it with him 16 seconds left to play opening quarter we'll be right back the rain has stopped right now but you can see uh, people who wore warm apparel it's now warm wet apparel third down and short safety came charging up they come with the blitz and the run stopped after a gain of about a half yard Carlton Hall a junior out of Midwest City underneath the bottom of that stack
First down, First down Tennessee. Tennessee. And Ron, the field position has now changed. Now yep. Tennessee's close to the mid of uh, the 50 yard line and they're we'll see if they take advantage of this field position change. That's going to be the last play of the opening quarter. So timeout on the field. Tennessee nothing and Vanderbilt nothing. Now we're about to start the second quarter. The numbers on Peyton Manning. 6 of 10, 21 yards. Still trying to find a way against his Vanderbilt defense and that may be it right there as Jay Graham comes close to breaking free and Kevin Winslow let's check in with you on the offense of Tennessee well Ron and Mike not only is coach Woodenhofer confusing Peyton Manning he's also confusing his wide receivers you know the coach the quarterback and the wide receiver has to be on the same page when they come up with a major blitz adjustment right now the wide receivers are having trouble getting lined up and when they make their blitz adjustment they're not doing it with a great deal of confidence Good look at Joey Kent, the senior out of Huntsville, Alabama. Gets his pass complete inside the 30-yard line. And again, tight end Dustin Moore, the sophomore out of Jonesboro, Georgia, tackled by Duncan. Biggest difference, Ron, in this drive is first down. Tennessee now is recording 8, 9, 10 yards on first down and controlling and dictating to Woody Woodenhofer now what you can do because you've got second and short now. You've got run, pass possibilities, third and short, same thing. So you don't get in those jams where you got long yardage situations and have to throw. Graham taking a pile with him. Six, seven, Harvey down at the bottom of the pile. They're going to spot him at around the 17-yard line. And Mike Tarico, what do you have for us? Ron in Charlotte, what a performance by Scott Harley, the East Carolina back setting the tone early. This 75-yard run, part of his 287 yards on the ground. He's got 1681 for the season, third best as of right now. East Carolina has scored on seven of their 11 possessions. They lead by 12. The game still with time left on ESPN2. Straight ahead with the running play. That goes for very short yardage as Chester Ford, senior out of Danville, Kentucky, 62-28. Tennessee tried to cross him up and sneak the fullback through. They're going to say that he made it to the 16. <laughs> Tennessee. First and 10, Tennessee. On Phil Fulmer's adjustment, David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, getting a little bit more mix on first down. Pressure from the outside. Short drop, and he throws it complete to Peerless Price. Not going to be enough for the first down, but again, as Mike got you, made the point. Now, they're picking up big yardage on first down. It's going to be a gain of almost eighth there. Well, you have to credit the coaches upstairs, David Cutcliffe, because all of a sudden, he sees what he wants out here, a matchup on the outside where you get a nice cushion one-on-one, -on -one. Peerless Price out there, first down throw by Peyton Manning. It's open. Now you're second and two, and you're dictating to the defense now. Sartell comes into the lineup. John Ware, number 87, senior out of St. Louis, Missouri at uh, tight end. Graham ahead of steam. Over the top, hit by Carlton Hall. And they're going to spot him in the vicinity of the five-yard line. The other thing you think about if you're on the Vanderbilt sideline now, one score doesn't change the thing as far as Vanderbilt's plan, but two scores now get you out of that run mode where you have to open it up a little bit more. So Tennessee's trying to put some pressure on that Vanderbilt, not only Vanderbilt defense, but putting some points on the board with Vanderbilt's offense. Mike, you can see that brace that Peyton is wearing on his right knee where he had a partial tear uh, of the ligament. He's going to call a timeout. Didn't want to lose the yardage as the 25-second clock about to run down. So let's take it with him. No score, but the volunteers are threatening. Tennessee with the first and goal at the five-yard line. Two tight ends, eye formation. Straight ahead, they go with the fullback and maybe a gain of a half yard, and that's about it. And Stallworth is there to put the tackle on Chester Ford. Well, the first four drives that Tennessee had tonight, they, uh, they stumbled around a little bit, but 
They're 16 yards, but this drive, some good adjustments by David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator. Mark Bradley, the offensive line coach, and Phil Fulmer have now resulted in a pretty good field position. They put it just inside the five. And Vanderbilt in that opening quarter really had them stymied, but they've uh, utilizing the tight end a very quick call, or quick passes, I should say. 12th play of the drive right here. Nice adjustment. Flag comes down. Scored the touchdown, but let's see if Jay Graham will get it or if it is, in fact, against Vanderbilt. Could have... Well, let's see. Duncan, I think, tried to grab him by the face mask. Obviously, they will turn that one down. But Jay Graham really didn't have anywhere to go there. Jamie Duncan was was right up in the back, though, but he made a good move, skated to the outside, and got the touchdown. That was uh, Peerless Price, 37. Who a was nice block. Throwing a nice block. My first thought was he was going to be holding on Peerless Price. Hall to attempt the extra point, trying to put Tennessee up 7 0. And he converts it. Well, one of the last great mysteries, as we talked about off the top of the telecast tonight for Tennessee, is will Peyton stay or will he go? Well, yesterday we sat down with him and asked him when and how he will base his decision. Well, it's hard to say right now. I'm looking forward to the time I have, we have to go home before the bowl game. Uh, probably between December 20th and the 25th before we have to be down at the bowl game. Sit down and talk with my family. Kind of the first downtime I, I'm going to have since May. I want to say, uh, you know, I've got final exams coming up. We've got Vanderbilt tomorrow night. got some bowl practice. And so I want to get all those things out of the way. Then sit down and get an idea of what's about to happen uh, down at the bowl game. I know I'm getting asked a lot of questions every single day. And I uh, just want to get a feel. And, but really have no set date for a Decision, but when you know, kind of sit down and weigh the positives and the negatives, and try to make the best decision possible. Here's his dad, Archie, with the uh, the parka on, and he says he doesn't know either. But they will have that discussion once Peyton gets home. Well, first of all, Archie's going to catch a cold. He does the Atlanta uh, Falcons games or the Saints games. I'm sorry, so he may catch cold tonight. But I think Peyton Man, I said it a couple weeks ago. He'll be back next year. Uniform. Charlie runs into his own man, still alive, and then he gets whacked. So Vanderbilt will have it with their worst field position to start tonight. Now they, they, as Mike mentioned, they threw away great starting positions. Their own 45, their own 40, the Tennessee 47, and then their own 47 twice, and they came away with no first downs and no points. He had a total of one yard offense in that uh, first quarter. And Ron, again, I, I re reiterate what I said. First downs are down to throw. Now you don't want to. You want to stay in the same kind of thinking. You don't want to give Tennessee a turnover right here and get the uh, landslide started. O.J. Fleming in motion. Allen under pressure as they try to throw it back to Fleming, who's the H-back. And Jonathan Brown, a junior out of Tulsa, Booker T. Washington, said, nope, we had this one sniffed out all the way. Well, a little delayed uh, counter move and then a play-action pass off of it, but Jonathan Brown read nothing in the run. He was playing pass all the way. Division one double-A playoff scores coming across. Of course, Division One's the only division that doesn't have a playoff. That's right. Tennessee faking blitz. Nope, they're coming. And they go with the draw play, and a nice job as Williams is hit by Duck. Now, Marcus Williams finally healthy again. He's a junior out of Richardson, Texas, and they want real badly to get him going. Ron, um, when you look at this Tennessee football team, John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, they've got better every week. And that's all you ask as a coaching staff, that your team gets better. The wins will take care of themselves. They're ranked eighth in the NCAA, and John Chavis doesn't get the credit he deserves for this defense. He's really done an admirable job. Third down, the line to make is just across the 38-yard line. Winkler in motion. Big pressure up the middle, lets it fly, and as you could see, Yoder 
had lost his footing for some reason. Bill Duff with pressure. He got tripped up by the defensive back. They both uh, got their feet uh, together. And Todd Yoder's a big six foot five. 180 pound freshman that caught a touchdown pass against Notre Dame and made that game very, very close in the opener. Merritt Angel, senior out of McHenry, Illinois. Standing back to punt. This is the fifth, third, and out for Vanderbilt in this ballgame. Excellent punt into the wind. There from the 27. 48 yards and a kick, only two on the return. We'll be right back. Seven to nothing, our score. Through its $1 million scholarship program, Burger King donates $100,000 per week in the name of scholar athletes whose achievements go beyond the field in all NCAA divisions. Tonight's students of the game from Tennessee offensive lineman Brad Lampley is a broadcasting major with a 3.97 GPA. And from Vanderbilt, strong safety Roosevelt Noble. He's a human and organizational development major with a 3.5 GPA. Well, Mike, the rain coming down very hard again here in Nashville. Manning with an audible. Quick look in pass. Those that complete. Jordan is right there to make the tackle on Nash. Another adjustment by Tennessee now. All of a sudden, you get a lot of man coverage and a lot of matchups. Now they come out and all receivers, there's no backs in the backfield. Nothing. So now you spread that defense out, and Peyton Manning just takes three steps, finds Marcus Nash. Pretty good call. Just like basketball, just sit down and find a hole. They're going to stay in this set now and see what Woody Woodenhofer comes back to try to do with this. Peyton has hit his last six. He's now 9 of 13. Here comes the blitz again. Quick pass, and that ball is just dropped. Mark Levine was there to hit him right in the breadbasket. When you go to uh, five receivers, one of them is going to usually be a running back. It's Mark Levine, who's a 5'11", 177-pound sophomore, just couldn't catch the ball, couldn't bring it in. And you know who's been quiet so far tonight? Of course, we're only 9-19 in the second quarter. Joey Kent, mm -hmm. the outstanding wide receiver for Tennessee. Has one catch. Well, the line to make for Tennessee, they got to take it to the 37. Oh, had him open, looking for a flag. Marcus Nash said, was I held? And I'll tell you, if he gets out of there, Mike, there's nobody in center field. Ron, you're exactly right. He was held. They had the right call on for the situation, and he was held all the way. Should have been interference. Or holding. They're on the backside. That's uh, Joey Kent on the backside. But Marcus Nash was held by Eric Vance, number 19. Or Finkel, one of the two. Gets his kick away. It's going to be Duke. Needs a block, puts the head down, goes across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Well, Sunday night NFL on ESPN continues tomorrow after NFL primetime. The New England Patriots against the San Diego Chargers. Drew Bledsoe and the 7-4 Patriots try to keep their playoff hopes alive against Junior Seau and the Chargers. And then on Thursday, an NFL special, the Philadelphia Eagles at the Indianapolis Colts, all here on ESPN. Vanderbilt on offense. This running play, five, maybe six yards. Ron, let's go back to the last play now. There's nobody in center field. You talked about that. This is Marcus Nash right here against Eric Vance. Now watch him hold him. Here comes a blitz. Woody Woodenhofer is going to blitz it. He just holds him so he can't get out. But you're right. If he gets out of there and he Ooh. doesn't hold him, it's, a, it's probably a touchdown. If Vance doesn't grab him, he would have been like the first guy out to practice. Getting hard to see the field. It's raining so hard, Mike. Williams, Marcus Williams, submarine, and Al Wilson will take his feet out from under him. First down, Vanderbilt. That's the reason the crowd is coming to life here. 
the initial first down at the 822 mark I think back in the first quarter I tried to give them one but they had nine in the play and then they suffered a five-yard penalty and didn't pick it up they appreciated that Ron you trying to well, I mean, it's, you know, it's getting to be that season right Again, 35, Marcus Williams takes it inside the 40. Tyrone Hines is holding on to him. Marcus Williams was a defensive back, free safety in 95. He brought all his tapes and uh, the uh, coaches, the offensive coaches, and when he was in high school and said, look at my tapes, I'm a running back. So they moved him to running back, and he's performed very well for Vanderbilt. Falhar said yesterday he is very capable and probably brings more speed to the table than uh, Dunavut and also Alvin Duke. Here he is again, straight up the middle, puts the head down. He's going to be short of the first down. They're going to need about two and a half yards as Al Wilson hops up into the hole to make the tackle. Now we've got the tempers flaring a little bit. The uh, Graffin Reed having words with one of the volunteers. Well, first of all, Vanderbilt's not going to a bowl game this year. So, and when you look at this situation now, you're third down and three yards to go. I think in terms of two plays here, I wouldn't kick it away. I think two plays. I'm going to try to get this first down. It may take me two plays against this Tennessee defense, but I'm going to come with two runs here and try to get this first down. Yoda to the bottom of your screen. Loses the football. Tennessee has picked it up in that time. And Hines has a convoy. And unless something major happens, he's going to score from about 65 yards. Well, Marcus Williams trying to get that extra effort and he forgot to hold on to the football. Well, it's a wet night, Ron. You give, give him uh, an A grade for uh, trying to get the extra yard. You see him, he, he never really had no, the football handoff. And then the ball's picked up by Tyrone Hines, and that's what Tennessee was looking for, the turnover against Vanderbilt's offense, and now that really changes the complexion of this ball game. 64 yards on the return, Mike, is what they're saying officially. Hall's extra point is good, and let's take a break. Tennessee 14, Vanderbilt nothing. Fourteen to nothing. Vanderbilt loses the ball on the fumble by Marcus Williams, and uh, very alertly, Tyrone Hines picks up the fumble and takes it 64 yards for a touchdown. And look at these folks. They really wanted to see this football game. Out there with umbrellas standing on. That's on the top of a parking lot. Over just off the uh, the north end zone. But they didn't want to pay a ticket. They'll pay them for more when they see their doctor next week after standing out in this. This is Charlie, Damian Charlie, with the return of uh, 22 yards. Well, Vanderbilt's defense played very well in the first quarter, but here's what happened to Vanderbilt's offense. One sack, third down, 0 for 6. They've had one first down. Of course, that fumble resulted in seven points. So their offense just hasn't been able to get anything going. And, Ron, when you get behind 14 to nothing, 21 to nothing, you have to open it up a little bit. And then you're really going to find the weakness in this offensive football team because they're having a tough time protecting Damian Allen, and they, they just don't have the skill that you need. And, of course, John Chavis can uh, gamble a little bit more with that 14-point cushion as they get a three-yard gain here, and Hines puts the stop on Marcus Williams. If they come in here next year and they recruit a good class and they add to this offensively, because most of they've got some pretty good defensive players are back, this is a team that's on track if they can get some players offensively to get a little bit better on offense. They're not that far off. Defensively, they're very, very good. running now under six minutes to play until halftime. Miller in motion, top of your screen. Running play, they're going to lose one, maybe two. Corey Terry has been in the backfield a number of times tonight to just really mess up the offense. Yeah, Ron, they're just not. Uh, Vanderbilt's offensive line cannot handle the front of Tennessee's, and you figure Billy Ratliff and uh, 
and Little are not playing in this ball game. Two of the better defensive players were hurt early in the year. Leonard Little, of course, is going through rehab right now. They said he's approaching at full speed. He's four weeks ahead, and uh, he'll be back and playing great again next year. Again, that's Miller in motion. Swings the pass out. That's a nice open field stop as Williams came out of the backfield and Terry Fair out there one-on-one -on -one puts the tackle on him. Tough to make a lot of moves, Ron, inside that hash with this wet turf tonight. Terry Fair just sat in good tack tackling position to make that stop. First completion for Vanderbilt tonight. Marin Angel, beautiful kick into the wind. Fair breaks it. Gets away from another tackler and will take it out across the 45-yard line. Tennessee will have great field position. Well, NCAA basketball on ESPN, the Direct TV Grade 8, Tuesday at 7.30, number three, Wake Forest against Mississippi State, followed by Purdue against number eight, Kentucky, and then on Wednesday at 7.30, number 17, UMass against Georgetown, followed by Cincinnati against Kansas. The Direct TV Grade 8. That Bobby Huggins is working that Cincinnati team. They lost the ball game, but that's not all bad in basketball. You know, you get their attention, so uh, he'll get that team ready to go. Graham over midfield in the vicinity of the 47. Anthony Jordan holding on to him. What you've got to consider also is uh, which Williams of Kansas is still playing without his, uh, his ace, who uh, should be back in, uh, in January. And Cincinnati lost to a very good team, Xavier, a big mm -hmm. rival. Jacques Vaughn getting that wrist to rehab. And you're going to have to change gears here pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Ball is loose. Eric Lane. Made the recovery, and let's see, they're going to spot this that is just inside the 45-yard the line. Bringing Chester Ford into the ball game now for Eric Lane is probably a lead blocker. Jermaine Copeland in the ball game here, quarterback. Third down and short, and they got it. Chester Ford straight ahead. Ron, Jermaine Copeland, uh, Phil Fulmer told me, he said, our football team needs his enthusiasm. They play him as a wide receiver every now and then. They'll stick him in the quarterback. He is the quarterback in case Peyton Manning goes uh, next year. But uh, as I said before, I'm totally uh, confident Peyton Manning's going to be back. And Copeland will continue playing wide receiver. And then they got T. Martin out of Mobile, Alabama, an outstanding young quarterback. Mandeville showing blitz as they uh, creep up those linebackers. Manning possibly with an audible. We got a big chance for a big play here. They come right up the middle, gets his pass off, and he just couldn't get quite enough on it. Copeland is who he was looking for. They have one more man defensively to block when you spread out like this with five offensive linemen. And what you want to do is you want to leave him come from the outside. When you look at this, there's as the defensive people are coming right here with the offensive line, they spring, they get against you. And you have center field wide open if you can just get it off. But as I was saying, you want the guy to come from the outside. You see number 89. Uh, Stallworth coming from the outside. That's the one you want to make the play, not the inside rusher. Vanderbilt comes up and then they back it off. Quick pass right over the middle. That one's going to be overthrown. 
Peerless Price, the intended receiver. You know, what's interesting is the rain continues to come down here in Nashville. Uh, orange, of course, the color of uh, Tennessee, and all of their people have on the orange slickers. Vanderbilt, of course, uh, the gold, so their people have on gold slickers, and that it, it makes you feel like you're in the world deer blind. And I'll tell you what, they were $5 a piece. Somebody made a lot of money tonight. I could promise you they're more than five, Michael. No, we, we the, harder, the, 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 the harder it rained, the more the price went up. I heard the guy. Ball is loose. Peyton Manning scrambling for it. It's as though he made his own recovery at the 45. Sometimes when the blitz comes, the center gets a little anxious to uh -huh. snap that football. And I don't think it ever got back to Peyton Manning. Woody Wooden offers done an out. might be wanting to block that linebacker Jamie Duncan a little bit too quick and don't get the ball back. He's fortunate the ball stayed there because a lot of times those linemen in their pass blocking, they kick it and it gets away from him. Is called for, and that thing's trying to die at the one. It just goes into the end zone. Mike Tirico, what do you have for us this time? Well, Ron, a reminder coming up on the GMAC halftime report. We'll have the highlights of the game that lived up to the billing. One against two in Tallahassee. The fallout. What does it mean for the month of December and January in college football? And we'll look at the major bowls and how the alliance takes out. Chris Lee and Kirk, join me from Tallahassee for the GMAC halftime report. See you then. Okay, Mike. How about Ward Dunn's performance today? 185 pounds. Still think he's the best player in college football. And Danny Werfel, really, I thought, put on a great performance. He got hit, Ron. We talked about all afternoon. What a gutsy performance by him. It really was. Coleman steps up into the hole and makes the hit on Marcus Williams. You know, the, the one thing that you can say about Dunn that is consistent, not in just big games, but in the really big games, he didn't disappear like a lot of people. He always came up even larger than life. Well, some of the ball games, when they get the big lead, they really don't need the ball in Warwick Dunn's hands. It's not the fact that, as you said, he plays the same all the time. He doesn't rise any level to play in a big ball game because he plays that way all week. For every week. But really, today, 185 yards for uh, Ward Dunn. He was the difference. Peyton Manning visiting with uh, David Cutcliffe, I'm sure, the offensive coordinator up here in the booth. <laughs> Running play. Tyrone Hines says, you're going nowhere. Coleman also helping out on the stop. And we are now under one minute left until halftime. Tennessee still has two timeouts, but it uh, looks like they're not going to elect to use one. No, don't forget, coming up, the GMAC Halftime Report, the Florida Showdown, Miami-Syracuse, and also Heisman status. And Mike uh, Tirico's not letting that Syracuse game get him down tonight, is it? <laughs> He's still cheerful there in the studio. He's. Uh, it takes a lot to get yeah, Michael down. That's right. 15 seconds, now down to 14. Straight ahead on the running play, and that should be the final play of this very soggy first half in Nashville. That's the end of the first half with our score. Tennessee 14, Vanderbilt nothing. Now let's join Mike Tirico for the GMAC halftime report. 14 to nothing, our score here in Nashville as we start this second half of play, and we'll see the Commodore offense to open up this second half. Jeff Hall to kick it off for Tennessee. Thank goodness the, the rain has stopped, and I hope it's gone for the night for those faithful who have uh, come out here to brave the elements. But the wind seems as though it's picked up, Mike. A little cooler here in the booth. I know that. Damian Charlie is uh, one of the deep men back. He gets it. Wow. What a hit. 
taken down hard after only seven yards on the return. Peyton Manning, 9 of 17, 48 yards. Well, it's a chess match. We start, we talked about from the start, Woody Woodenhofer, the defensive coordinator, trying to confuse Peyton Manning. Now, this is the bear front right here. Three linemen covering the center, two guards trying to get single blocks, the two ends coming from the outside. So he shows him a bear look. Then he comes back. Next thing, gives him a two deep. Got the uncovered receiver there. Next play, we'll, we'll so, see the next play here in a second, Ron, after this first first down. Fred White, by the way, number two, made that uh, tackle on special teams. Pass is up. Boy, Yoder got it kind of turned around. He was open. And then one of Tennessee's answers was to go to five receivers, three and two, and now there's no one in center field for Woody, but man coverage all the way here. Man, man, man. Peyton Manning now had a chance to get the home run, but Woody Woodenhofer throwing the whole Chuck Knoll Pittsburgh Steeler playbook at Peyton Manning tonight. I was interested in visiting with him yesterday, talking about at a time when he first came here, he told that defense, he said, you're not smart enough to learn what I'm trying to teach you here. And he said, these kids love a challenge. They not only have learned it, they really enjoy every time you put a new wrinkle in. Running play is going to go for short yardage. That's Tyrone Hines who was out there to hit Donovan and knock him out of bounds. That's the only thing I wouldn't agree with Woody on. The smartness of these players. Tyrone Hines, number 47. Middle linebacker just running down the line of scrimmage, making the play on Donovan. John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, says he plays complete football all the time. He's got 101 tackles going into this game, 10 for losses. Third down and the line to make is around the 28. Short drop, look in, and it's through the hands of Yoder. Ball was thrown just too hard, Ron. It's it's too close. He threw it too hard on this type of night. Damian Allen uh, decided on Vandy because they keep him at quarterback. He's talked about being from Ohio. He's recruited by Northwestern, Ohio State, and Duke. He decided on the Commodores. Bill Marin Angel standing back to punt, waits for the snap at the seven yard line. Inflammation for Vanderbilt. Terry Perry back at his own 39. Fair lets it get by, and this is all the way back inside the 10 yard line. And he is going to be pushed out shy of the 15. That's a 71 yard kick. And let's say six on the return. Hit a line drive, and Terry Fair just didn't play it right. Peyton Manning's chart, when you look at this, and you look at only one pass past 15 yards, that means one thing. Woody Woodenhofer is blitzing, manning up, trying to get every throw that thrown on time, and that he can crowd the receivers, the bump and run, playing man coverage. And so far, it's been pretty successful in this passing game, stopping uh, Peyton Manning. Graham, 5, 10, he's loose across the 30. And they're going to spot him down at the 32 as Darrell Finkler got a hand on him. And when you stop Peyton Manning, then you get a chance to run the football. Jay Graham busts into the secondary. Good, solid runner. yards in the play so you get an 18 run from Jay Graham then you turn around to Nash and hit that one well Peyton Manning again was a good play fake you talked about it earlier Ron he's got two tears in the MC MCO and he's playing hurt tonight still playing a very good football game Marcus Nash finally tackled by Eric Vance he told me last night, Mike, I asked him what it hindered, and he said it really doesn't bother my throwing. It's when I have to do a 360 in reverse on a handoff. He said, that's when I get a little bite. Short drop and quick throw. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. 
And that is something right there as Kent comes up with the reception. And and how to Joey Kent is how quickly he gets the ball away. Well, he's got a quick release, Ron. He's going to throw the fade right here because you got two deep coverage right here. Peyton Manning's going to take a three-step drop, hit the fade right in between the corner and safety to Joey Kent. Can't throw it any better with that quick release. That is a hard route to throw also, Michael. Tough route. You're right. you got to put it right in where he did, right there inside the safety. Although for a right-hander, it's the best way to throw it is to the left rather than to the right. Short drop again. Got a fade for the end zone. And it is intercepted by Vanderbilt. That's Chavis. Well, that was played well by Corey Chavis. Started every game here at Vanderbilt since his freshman year. We talked about the fact that they're very proud of their corners, and you see the reason why. Well, he's the left corner, runs a 4 4 40. He's getting his hands up, kind of fell into this one. Like he did. In fact, watch the receiver. Watch what happens. He slows the ball down, and he comes down in Chavis's arms. It doesn't matter how you do it, just do it. He will not have a nicer gift on the 25th. Play action. Most intercepted Al Wilson. Kevin Winslow. Oh, Ron, you know, we're looking at Corey Chavis make that great interception. It runs in his blood, football does. He is the cousin or nephew of Barney Chavis, who played with the Denver Broncos for a number of years. And talking to Coach Woody before the ball game, he said, You will definitely see this guy playing on Sunday. Well, his numbers are very good on a defense that in this season has had to play a lot. That is Winkler in motion. Donovan looks for a block across the 25, and he's up to around the 28-yard line, and it's going to be third down and short as Jester and Wilson combine on the stops for the bottom tier. Well, that wasn't a pretty screen, but uh, Damian Allen kept going back till it opened up, and that's when he threw the football to Jason Donovan. He didn't hurry it. Is what the way he threw that screen's the way you have to. You got to invite the lineman in for a little party and then dump the ball over to Donovan and let him run. Third down conversions. Nothing so far tonight. And I'll tell you what, depends on the spotting here. They are very close to converting this one. Brown and Hines combining in the stop. And they got it. Vanderbilt will move the chain. Jason Donovan again trying to use his big frame. He's six foot one, 225 pounds to get that first down. Second first down for Vanderbilt. And if he only behind 14 to nothing and have two first downs, that tells you how well their defense is playing. Yeah, that's for sure. That's a good point. Allen, a lot of time, got a man there, and it's incomplete. That was O.J. Fleming, who was the H-back, who they had sent deep just across midfield. Well, Damian Allen has a strong arm, Ron. He was 10-19 versus Tennessee last year with a touchdown pass. Two out of 12 tonight, 14 yards. They just have been ineffective running and throwing the football. The best weapon they've had is a punter. 71 yarder a moment ago. <laughs> 14 to nothing. Tennessee just under 12 to play, third quarter. Tennessee walks those linebackers up again. Here they come. Pass right over the middle. Got it complete. That's Fleming. And let's see. They tripped him up at the 38. Jason Parker makes the tackle. We're well, going to look at Tennessee's linebackers just cheating up, trying to get the cadence down. There's Tyrone Hines, number 47, coming. That's Ron Green, number 55, also in the face of Damian Allen, but he was able to get the ball to O.J. Fleming. But they're back to that third two again. Third down again, Tennessee creeping up defensively. 
Parker, the deepest man, as he's about six yards off the ball. Running play, Donovan, going to be stuck. That's Corey Gaines, who got penetration, turned him a flip. And it will be punting time for Vanderbilt. Ron, they brought 11 people up at the line of scrimmage, figuring that there's no way Vanderbilt's going to throw this football. And look at the penetration. Corey Gaines is a safety, number 30. He's in the backfield to make that play and stop that first down. Just daring Vanderbilt to throw. Marin Angel, see if he can do it again. Oh, this is a dandy, really good kick. Fair inside the 15-yard line. The fair breaks through the tacklers. Almost got away a second time, and it's going to be stopped at the 25. So Peyton Manning back out to see if he can get some offense going. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Kellen Winslow coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. Tennessee on offense, the running play, six, seven, now eight yards as Benson makes the hit on Graham. But slowly but surely, it looks as though that Tennessee offensive line is beginning to gain control up front. They're gaining some momentum. Jay Graham, before the Ole Miss game, David Cutliffe challenged him. He said, you know, we're doing too much dancing, stopping and starting, run up in there and get four yards of carry. And that's the way he's running tonight. Left side, very close to the first down. Stallworth came up into the hole to make the hit on him. And the numbers on Graham so far tonight, 10 rushes, 65 yards, one touchdown. Very decent average, particularly on this kind of uh, wet, slick surface. And, Ron, it's been a frustrating year for him because, and again, it goes back to the offensive line. The offensive line really didn't come of age early in the season. It took him a while. Straight ahead, and the quarterback sneak will have it easily as we're about to go under nine minutes to play third quarter. Well, following this game at ESPN, we've got a hoop doubleheader for you. Texas Tech at number 25, George Washington. Then at midnight, following Sports Center, the Great Alaska Shootout Championship. Number eight, Kentucky against the College of Charleston. Fresh off their upset of number 21, Stanford, last night. All this evening here on ESPN. Here they come from everywhere. Manning goes on top, and that ball is knocked away, and actually, Chavis came close to having another pickoff. Peerless Price had to play a little defensive back on that one. A pretty good call again, uh, Tennessee. You like to be in situations when the blitz comes. Now watch the blitz come right here, but watch Tennessee pick it up. Do a good job of picking everybody up. Now Peyton Manning's got time to try to find Peerless Price one-on-one -on -one against Corey Chavis. Good coverage again by Chavis. Timeout, Vanderbilt. So let's take the break with him. Tennessee, 14 to nothing. We'll be right back. 14 to nothing. Tennessee continues to lead. Don't forget, coming up later in the game, we'll be selecting the Visa players of the game. Peyton Manning with Joey Kent down below the bottom of the screen there. He's out left. And he throws it back to Kent. They try to get the quick screen. And a nice job by Vinson, who got in front of the blocker and just spoiled it. Well, that's three times they've tried to run the quick screen, but Freddie Vinson and Corey Chavis have been up to the challenge every time out of that corner spot. Play action away, just where he's sprinting away. Now he throws back to Joy Kent, but you see again, Freddie Vinson gets underneath that block, and there's never a chance for that play to develop. Here comes number one. Don't let that play develop. He gets underneath the block, makes that tackle. Vincent a sophomore out of North Augusta, South Carolina, 5'11", 170. See Jeffco, the linebacker, stepping up. They come with the blitz. Graham gets the handoff, breaks it across the 40-yard line, still running hard, close to the first down at the 46. Anthony Jordan. And give Lane credit for a good block. It's 
Okay, and Ron, the officials have done a nice job tonight. There's a, a couple of things that have happened here. One of the Vanderbilt players was over on the Tennessee bench, and he hurried up to make the to stop anything from starting. But Jay Graham again with a good uh, first down effort there on third down, but they're going to be a little short. Ten-man rush at the line of scrimmage by Vanderbilt, or that's what they're showing. Let's see if he comes after him if they have the return. It's the return. Beautiful kick. This thing is going to hit in the end zone. So Binion bangs it there. It's going to be good for 55 yards, and the Commodores will be scrimmaging from the 20. Well, join Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit for the Heisman Trophy preview show on Friday, December the 13th at 7.30. Then on Saturday, December the 14th at 7.30, the Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's. Live from the Downtown Athletic Club, we'll bring you highlights and interviews with the best players in college football, along with a presentation of the Heisman Trophy. Saturday, December the 14th, 7.30 Eastern, here on ESPN. Donovan, just nothing there. They closed the door on him. Hines combining with Ron Green on the stop. Ron, it's tough when you don't have talent. I mean, that's the way it is tonight. People can complain about this offense or they can boo or whatever you want to do. They just they don't have weapons enough on offense to take advantage of what people are doing defensively. Speed on the outside. They got young receivers, a young offensive line, a young quarterback. And they're doing the best they can with this situation. Donovan, the intended receiver, and uh, just thrown off the mark a little bit. When you get to the, this time of year and uh, as a coaching staff, uh, what you wanted to see of your football team was get better. And Vanderbilt has made some great efforts this year, starting with Rod Dalhauer's opening game, Notre Dame. They had a chance to beat Notre Dame in that game. We were here, uh, and they, uh, they controlled that football game and had a good shot up until probably five, six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Pass intercepted following the tip. Nope, they say incomplete. I beg your pardon. Fleming got a hand on it. Almost picked off by Noel. And Torrey Noel had it, but just couldn't hold on. And the best weapon for Vanderbilt is on the field, the punter. Jay Perry standing at his own 40. Baron Angel this time, a line drive. Vanderbilt with good coverage downfield, and that one's going to be touched dead at around the 33. It's a 47-yard kick. Well, you can't compare him to others who uh, went early. Peyton is thorough enough to get first-hand advice on going to the pro. Well, all some similar situations with guys like Heath and McNair and Bledsoe and Trent Dilfer, but I think all guys are a little bit different. I think mean, all guys left for different reasons. And uh, But you know, those guys work to asking questions, too, and I want to try and do that when I have a chance to ask some of those guys that left early. And ask Drew Bledsoe, you know, do you regret it? Why would you leave? And to kind of get on that side of the environment to see what people are saying on that side because you know, I, now I'm in the college scene. You kind of get one-sided. So I want to get kind of both angles and just see what people are saying. And it, it's going to be a tough decision. I wish it was easy. I wish I could just say, this is what I want to do. It, it, it had no problems with it, but it is going to be such a hard decision. I want to try and take my time and make the right one. And once I do it, kind of like when I chose here to come to Tennessee, uh, I don't want to look back. I want to move forward and try and make the best of it. You know, one thing that his dad said, his coaches say the same thing, and his teammates. It will be his decision. Nobody's going to make it for him. If you look at uh, Archie and Olivia in the stands here tonight, able to take their parkers off as uh, the rains have finally come to an end. But that's the kind of kid that Peyton is. He will make up his mind. Loss of three in that running play. Manny with a short drop puts up this pass, and he got it. Inside the 45, and he's down to the 40-yard line to Joey Kent. 30 yards. 
We need to get that bump and run by Freddie Vincent on the outside. You can't lay it in here much better than this to Joey Kent. Where you want to throw it over the outside shoulder and let the receiver make the play. You know, the, the best point that you made there, Mike, is Vincent with the, the only other thing he could do is interfere with it. And he was whipping there step for step right on. He had good coverage. into the flat they get it complete and it's going to see out of bounds at the 34 to mccullough kevin winslow let's check with you or well, ron you know adding to the speculation of whether or not Pey peyton manning will return next year he his decision is not without risk of uh, going to the nfl or staying injury is not one of them right now the family has a five million dollar life excuse me injury insurance policy on peyton if he does come back next year and get hurt yeah, I, that's an, one of the other things that I, I talked with uh, his dad about it. That's not cheap, I think. <laughs> no, but they'll get every penny back. Yeah, uh, you're exactly right. You know, Mike, I know that you think he's coming back, and uh, I don't disagree with you, but I think maybe the little bit of scare with the knee injury against Arkansas, plus the fact if you're talking about money between five and seven a year, and I think that's probably what we're talking about, you can't say no to $35 million. No, but he will. Ward Dunn said no at Florida State and came back, and I think you'll find the same kind of person right here in Peyton Manning. He's going to come back because he enjoys the collegiate experience. He got a man open and just overthrew him at the five-yard line. Nash, the junior out of Tulsa. You know, he had said there's something interesting in the uh, meeting last night. He said the Memphis loss uh, took Tony in how you appreciate the winning. You get used to it sometimes, and you, you don't appreciate it. And that loss kind of stuck with him a little bit. 26-4 and four as a starter. Those are just four losses right there, Florida. Alabama and Memphis. But he said that Memphis game now, he's got a better feeling about winning. Appreciate some more. Under five minutes. Second down play. Flag comes down. Boy, that's thrown by the umpire, so it looks like this one's going to come back as Hall will corral him. Hall and Finklin make the tackle. Ford says bring this one back and they'll step off five it'll be uh, second down and 15 and you think about Woody Woodenhoff for how frustrated he is as uh, Peyton or Archie's got a good smile he's got the Bob Euchre seats tonight on he's usually in the press box <laughs> tell you what anybody who's out in this crowd's got a Euchre seat tonight <laughs> That pass out, he's got Graham there. Five yards, has 10, counted off at a gain of about 12, as Chavis will finally put the stop on him. Just a safe throw to Jay Graham on the outside becomes like a running play. And you get him in the open field, second and long, and now you get it to where it's third and five. Woody Woodenhofer has to be frustrated, though. 14 nothing, 4-13 to go in the third quarter. His troops have done what they've been asked to do. They have really stymied this uh, Tennessee offense. You know, they did last year, but they were out there for 97 snaps. Here comes the all-out blitz. Manning, well, he gets away. Finally is going to be tackled, and it's uh, Eric Vance. He put the stop on it. Most quarterbacks would have tried to throw this football and then would have got caught with intentional grounding, but he was trying to make it to the corner. He doesn't have any receivers. When you sprint out, he's trying to get to that side of the field. Now you work back, back to the side to where there's no receivers. He can't throw the football. Eric Vance makes the play, makes the tackle. That's the first sack against Manning. And for the fourth down situation, Tennessee wants to talk it over, so they call timeout. So let's take the break with him. 339 left in the third.
So Tennessee has made up their mind that uh, they're going to go for a 48-yard field goal attempt. Jeff Hall. You see his longest, 46. So this would be a new personal high. Got plenty of distance. And wide left. No good. Well, defense did its job again. Forced the field goal attempt, and it uh, was wide. And we're still in this ball game if he could just get some offense. Just. Mm hmm Little bump job with the uh, with the upright on the left. O.J. Fleming, he is back in motion. And Damian Allen uh, lost his footing. Damian Allen came out, I think, this, the nose guard for uh, Tennessee. Either Duff or Green knocked the blocker back into Damian Allen, never got out of, out of the way from the center. That's what I said, he lost his footing. With a little help. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an objective way to do it, Michael. Look at the total yards. 225, Tennessee Vanderbilt. Still staggering a little bit. Gets his pass right over the middle. That's going to be a gain out to the 36-yard line. As Tomacek, senior out of right here in Nashville, the tight end makes the catch. Now, Damien Allen waited till this play was open. He tried to throw it, pumped it a little bit too soon, but he waited till Jason Tomachak just cleared the linebackers, found the opening in the zone, and he delivered the ball. Gone under two and a half minutes to play, third quarter. Billy Miller in motion. Pass overthrown. Ooh. What a headache. Raymond Austin came up and made that hit on Donovan. That's one you go back to the huddle and you tell the quarterback, don't throw that ever again. Were you throwing a high over my head and get me murdered here? See what happened, Mike, is also he was getting hit. So that thing was kind of like a wounded duck coming out there. And then his gentleman got wounded. Aaron Angel. Fair for the 25. Tries to go back into the boundary. Gets by a couple of folks. Then it's going to be stopped at the 27. 39-yard kick and two on the return. Well, live from Disney World, join Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet for the Home Depot College Football Awards Show, a celebration of the best of this college football season. They'll give the Maxwell Award for the Coach of the Year and also the award for the Defensive Player of the Year and much, much more. The Home Depot College Football Awards Show, Thursday, December the 12th, 8.30, here on ESPN. See Jason Hill, number 72, junior out of here in Nashville, jumping on the back of the running back and stopping Graham. Fourteen to nothing. Tennessee on top. One of those touchdowns came from the defense. Hines took it 64 yards with a fumble return. Well, the Tennessee offense only accounting for one touchdown so far. All-out blitz is coming, and they got man open. And the tight end, Dustin Moore, is loose across midfield and down to the 49. Well, Peyton Manning made this play with a good fake. Now into the two tight end offense, Dustin Moore blocks and then releases in the flat. Peyton Manning with a good fake. Vanderbilt was blitzing. They thought it was run all the way. 
just puts a little high fly up there to Dustin Moore, and uh, they cross the 50-yard line. Almost got that ball stripped and knocked out of there. Yeah, he did. He was kind of trying to change hands, but still cold, holding it like a loaf of bread. Well, that's a nice shot. Graham still on his feet, and finally he's going to be knocked down for the loss. He was lucky to get by the first person who penetrated, Jareel Finklin. Also, Anthony Jordan is the man who was coming through with that initial pressure. Tennessee's offense now getting a little frustrated. Peyton Manning's coming over here to the coaches and uh, gesturing to the sideline that he wants to do something, but uh, I think the offense getting a little frustrated here. Ron, you made the point. Seven points uh, for the offense tonight. And they're used to putting a lot of points on the board. Mm -hmm. Yep, that they are. It's going to be the last play of the third quarter if they, in fact, even run a play. Yep. With one tick left. Put up a little fade route, and uh, Joey Kent went inside rather than outside, and that is the end of the third quarter. So let's take a timeout. 14 to nothing, Tennessee. Well, good look at the uh, press box here in uh, Nashville and also the faithful. And I mean faithful. It, these are football fans here to sit out in this kind of weather. It has been miserably wet and turning colder. Third down and long. And, well, they got five of it back. Glenn Young jumped across. Couldn't get back. Defense offside. Five yards. Still third down. So let's see, third down at about 11. The line to make is just inside the 40. Manning right over the middle. He's got him and knocked away. That is a nice defensive play as the real Finklin just knocked it right out of Joey Kent's hands. He punched it out, Ron. He's in good coverage here. Dereal Finklin, number 22, is in good coverage here on Joey, or Marcus Nash. Nash, I beg your punches pardon. that football out. Never allowed him to bring it into uh, his body. kick from the 36 yard line fair catch is called for and is made so that's 32 yards on that kick well how about this comparison Manning to Manning Archie of course on the left you see 4700 yards for him 73 for Peyton almost 65 percent but touchdown dad's got the solid edge there 25 to 9 and of course rushing touchdowns I'm talking about and Ron they played a whole different style of football back then which you know and a lot of wing uh, two backs in the backfield mm -hmm. at uh, Ole Miss so like he did a lot of sprint out when he was playing Damian Allen sets in the pocket gonna go on top and got it as Yoder the defensive back, he gave him a little shove, and that's going to go for the touchdown. 82 yards. That's the type of play they threw against Notre Dame. Hung the ball up to Todd Yoder, the young receiver, who's six foot five, was a running back coming out of high school. Well, now, what Tennessee is going to fuss about, watch the collision. Almost looks like he pushes off. Yeah, right he now. did. He pushed him down. <laughs> Terry Fair, number 13, on the coverage. You hear the chorus of boos from the folks up in Knoxville. Extra point attempt is good. So let's take a break. Tennessee 14, Vanderbilt 7. We'll be right back. Well, now the Tennessee defense with a little case of frustration after giving up that long touchdown pass. That's the longest play of the year for Vanderbilt. In fact, they almost doubled their total yardage output for the night on that play. 82 yards as they officially. Gerardo 
kicking it off, and this is Levine at the goal line. He'll return it. 15, and will not get to the 20-yard line. And let's go down to the sideline and Kevin Winslow. Kevin, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, it's a pleasure to have, of course, Archie Manning, the father of Peyton Manning. And the obvious question is, Archie, what is the kid going to do? Well, I don't know, Kevin. And, um, you know, he hadn't decided. Really, to Peyton's credit, he's he's uh, hadn't really thought about it, I don't think. At least he hadn't talked about it much during the season. The season's drawing to an end, so he's going to have to give it some thought and weigh it and uh, make a decision. Um, he's got, you know, he's got some time before a bowl game. He's got the exams. And... Uh, but uh, it, he'll be home a few days for Christmas if he wants to sit down and talk about it. And uh, we'll talk to anybody he wants to. You know, he's here in Tennessee's side of it, and obviously they want him to stay. So it's a tough deal for him. It really is. He, he's got a great love for college football, for Tennessee. And, but, you know, he's got to look at the other side of it, too. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think he'll make a good decision. I just said I'm, I'm going to be there to support him. What are some of the factors that you think he should consider? Just what he wants to do. I mean, you know, he's got to look at it and maybe talk to someone about the, um, you know, what his his opportunity in pro football. What some experts think about his if he's ready to go in there. If not, then uh, then he should stay. Um, and then you know, of course, he, I think he pretty much knows some of the things with staying. You know, if you get hurt or the disappointments there, it's just a it's a tough thing. You know, everybody knows what they would do, but you know, they're not in his shoes. And uh, he's 20 years old. I think he's mature, but I think it's a it's a tough deal and a big deal for a 20-year-old to have to make that decision. Uh, I think the one thing I know he'll do is give it a lot of thought. I'm sure he'll pray about it, think about it, and weigh all the options and then make a decision. My advice to him was and make, you know, it's a win-win and make the decision, never look back. How important to your son are awards like the Heisman, the United National Championship? Well, I think... I think national championship or you know an SEC championship where he would love to he would love to do that play in a championship game uh, SEC championship I think it's real important I think he's about you know team goals the best I can tell I, I've never really heard him talk much about the Heisman Trophy and I, I think he's seen you know how that can fluctuate and you know if your team loses as a quarterback you drop out of that and you know I, I don't and I couldn't sit I couldn't really in good conscience tell him to stay in school and try to win the Heisman Trophy I, you know, stay for other reasons, but not that. All right, Archie, I'm sure he has uh, a very good source to go to, and I know you're going to be there for him. I've met him a couple of times. I really enjoy him. He's a great young man. It looks like he's going to stay, in my opinion, because it looks like he's enjoying what he's doing. Well, he does, and he's had a great time at, at Tennessee. He made a great choice. It was a tough choice then, mm -hmm. and he made a good choice. He's been happy there, and, um, you know, like I said, I'm going to be there for him. I'm sure he'll he'll do what, what's best and do the right thing. Now, you've been sitting up in the stands watching the ball game. What about Coach Woodenhofer's game plan against him? Oh, Woody's tough. You know, I was, God, Woody used to kill me, uh, <laughs> and uh, he's, uh, you know, especially the weather kind of helps him out. It's tough conditions for both quarterbacks. And, but Woody can give you a lot, and uh, it, it really it really makes it tough. So, you know, I hope Tennessee can hold on here. It's going to be a, it can be a struggle the rest of the way. All right, you thanks for coming down from the stands and taking time out of your family time to spend with us. We appreciate it very much. Thanks, Kevin. Ron, back up to you. Okay, Kevin, thanks for me. Yeah, you know, that's that is one of the things uh, the individual versus team awards that uh, that the young man I think is, believes is very important the team stuff yeah that, he's very into that the individual awards that's not the highest priority in his life right now they're battling for their life with a third down and 10 Vanderbilt has just scored and we got a seven point game just over 12 to play Peyton right over the middle incomplete Mike that looked like it went right through Kent's hands had a chance for an interception here again. Vanderbilt has just completely confused Tennessee. Give Woody Woodenhofer the credit and give his team credit for taking the plan to the field and playing with a lot of enthusiasm on defense. Bending back to kick. He waits for the snap at the 16. Line drive kick returnable from the 32. This is Duke. Gets by one. And going to be knocked out of bounds just across the 40-yard line. So 38 yards in the kick. And this man right now has a little bit of a magic wand. 
consider this the last three years. 93, Tennessee won it 62 to 14. 94, 65 to nothing. Last year, 12 7. And right now, we've got a 14 to 7 ball game. In fact, the difference is that middle linebacker, number 47. Hines with a fumble return, 84 yards. In fact, let's go back and take a look at it in case you missed it. Ball is lost by Marcus Williams. And you see, he just scoops it up off the ground, even away from one of his teammates. He didn't want to recover it. He saw an avenue. And it's not only an avenue, he had a convoy and took it 84 yards. And that's the thrill for all defensive players. 64, I should say. 64 yards. Last year, Tennessee had to punt 13 times in this football game. Yeah, they were 3 of 15 on third down conversions last year, and they're 4 of 14 tonight. Pass right over the middle, just beyond the outstretched hands of Fleming. And there are two markers down on the sidelines. And we just checked here in the booth that nine punts in this ball game for Tennessee tonight. Let's check in now with Mike Tirico. Mike? Brown underway at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Brad Otten is just walking back on the field. He came into this game with bruised ribs, wearing a flak jacket, hit here by Corey Miner on the opening drive, had to leave the game, but as I say, he's just walked back onto the field. On that drive, SC has a field goal, so they're up by three on ND. You know, that's one of those games always emotional and... Uh, doesn't always go according to Hoyle, does it, Mike? No. A big rivalry that ends the season for these two teams tonight. Donovan tries to break it off to the right. There was nothing to the left side, and Bill Duff said, mm -mm, come here. Made the stop on him. 14 to 7, our score. We're about to go under 11 minutes to play in this fourth period. One drive is all Rob Dalhauer needs right now. Good field position. Third and three yards to go. He just needs one drive out of his football team to tie this game up. Delta Jr. out of Bell Ram, New Jersey. 6'3", 260 pounds. Third down. Line to make is the Tennessee 48. Allen rolls the pocket. Going to go long. And this one's going to be intercepted by Raymond Austin. And I'll tell you, Allen is still down back at the 34-yard line. He took a shot, and he is holding his right wrist. Al Wilson got him, number 27. Sprint out all the way, and Al Wilson's going to be a linebacker. He waits. He's got man coverage on the tight end. He blocks. He comes in, just delivers Whoa. a blow to Damian Allen. Now, there is a flag at the point of the interception as well. Down at the 20-yard line. Well, it's like a punt, Ron. You get the ball back inside. It looks like it's going to be inside the right around the 11-yard line. So now this is where Woody Woodenhofer's got to pull out some blitzes here and try to get a turnover. He needs to get the football in as short a distance for that offense to go as possible. You know, Florida State got one of these today. It's one of those things... Go dancing after the ball game, but don't do it on the field. No, it really team. hurts your football team. Graham close to the 15-yard line. Boykin holding on to him. Boykin, one of the seniors that was introduced here tonight prior to uh, this final regular season game, 6'3", 270. And uh, according to his coach, probably has the most ability. Very capable young guy up front. He was real emotional. He said he puts all the opponents' brochures at the start of the season, and after they play him, he tosses them aside, and he said it finally dawned on him. This is the last game, and it's out the door. No more brochures. No more brochures and no more football at Vanderbilt. And uh, he was real emotional. Uh, Woody Woodenhofer says the most underrated player on the defense. About to go under 10 minutes left in this football game. Third down for Tennessee. They need this football, let's see, at the 21-yard line to get the first. Vanderbilt shows blitz. Now they see him backing off. 
incomplete pass. Almost intercepted. That was Chavis. And Mike, you can see him put his hands when the linebackers go up. That's one of the things he also said yesterday. They're calling off the blitz when you see those linebackers doing it. And they know, you know, they trade every tape, so they know the checkoff that Tennessee's going to go to at this time of the year. And it's a little hitch pattern in number four. Corey Chavis just breaks on the hitch, deflects the ball away from Joey Kent. Now they should have great field position, any kind of return here. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it's gotten tougher to throw because the wind really has picked up. Manning has missed his last six passes in a row. This is Duke. Return to the right. Now throws it back to the 40-yard line. This is Chavis. And they're going to wind up with it's negligible. <laughs> so let's take a break. We'll draw that one in the, uh, in the dirt here when we come back. Chavis trying to loosen up his leg. That was an interesting play on the return a moment ago, Mike. Well, what you're trying to just to find a way to score here. Now, this is Duke going to return the punt. Now, he starts to the right, trying to draw everybody to the right. Throws back to Chavis, but number five, Eric Lane, really stayed in his lanes coming down the field and didn't allow that play to become a big play. But I like the call. I thought it was if you take a chance when you know, you're struggling on offense, try to figure ways to score. Innovative. Yeah, that's right. So they got the football at their own 42 and a half yard line. Just over nine to play in this one. Tennessee walks those linebackers up again. They stay at home though. Allen, he is going to get hit again this time. Jonathan Brown, second time that they've sacked him. Came right around the corner, beat the tackle uh, right on the snap of the ball. Damian Allen uh, had a little bit of a time, but there's just nowhere to throw the football. Jonathan Brown, 91, coming around the corner. There's the hit. Just no place for it to be thrown. Winkler in motion. Allen pass right over the middle. He has got it complete to Tomachek, the tight end, and about five yards short of the first down. Mike Tarico, back to you. Okay, Ron, just a reminder for the folks who may have been out doing some holiday shopping and missed one against two, a huge day for Warwick Dunn. 185 yards, a career best, as Florida State got the defensive pressure, sacking Danny Werfel six times. He'll be the new number one after beating Florida by three. Full story on the scoreboard show after the game. Our situation, 14-7. to seven. Tennessee over Vandy and the Commodores with the football. Third down, but they need about five and a half yards. Allen pass. Got his man out there, and he fell down. O.J. Fleming looked as though he was trying to make a cut. If he just continued straight, he's got the first down. Yeah, Ron, you got to go for this right now, too. 7.43 to go, and if you punt the football again, of course, your defense is playing well. It's a tough decision. This is an automatic to go for it. Because you punt the ball down there, you got a chance of holding him there. It's a tough decision for Rod Dahar. Paul Morgan, number 41, comes into the lineup. He's the H-back from Portland, Mississippi. Remember this, yardage has been tough against Tennessee in short yardage situations. There's a line in the sand right here. Puts it on his hip, going to run a little bootleg, and he will have it. That is a nice second effort. Jester got a hold of him. But Damon Allen said, I'm going to put it on the hip and I'll do it. Give Rod Dalhar credit because that's the only way you're going to make that first down because, uh, and they're close on getting it measured, but if it would have went up inside, Tennessee controlled that line of scrimmage. Mike, what we've had in this ball game by both teams, 28 total offensive possessions and 20 punts. Receivers out in case he wants to throw the football, but that's a run all the way by Damian Allen. Interesting thing is O.J. Fleming, the H-back, ran 
ran another man into the coverage and didn't block anybody. Didn't block the soul. <laughs> First down, Commodores. Ball on the Tennessee side of the 50. Pumped it once, going to go on top, and he's got double coverage over there, and the safety who was coming over to help out fell down. Parker might have had a shot at intercepting that. He stayed, uh, he just almost stopped Todd Yoder when the, when the Tennessee player fell down. It looked like Todd Yoder stopped. Todd Yoder running a fade route. He pulls up a little bit. Of course, if he keeps going, he's going to trip anyway, but Raymond Austin fell down, so... Uh, by falling down, Raymond Austin may have stopped this play, but you're right, he'd probably intercepted it if he'd have been uh, kept his feet. He certainly would have been in decent position. Six minutes, 34 seconds to play. Tennessee ganged up at the line of scrimmage. Here they come. Allen gets his pass away, incomplete. And I'll tell you, his receiver, Yoder, just simply because of the wet surface, couldn't turn. He was there, and again, the defensive back had fallen. Yeah, and again, pressure by Bill Duff, number 50, but you're going to see Todd Yoder working up the football field, running the out against Raymond Austin. He's open, and Austin fell down again. Yeah. But uh, Damian Allen couldn't get him the football because Bill Duff, number 50, was in the face of the quarterback. Now, that's the dangerous thing on a night like this, which has been said a million times in watching this game. The advantage goes to the offense because they know the cut they're making unless that happens. They know where they're life. going. Mm -hmm. And out this way, probably. Allen going to have to hurry. Gets it away, and he just puts this one up for grab. And almost intercepted by Parker. Came off his shoulder pad and bounced away, but it'll be fourth down Vanderbilt. See, that's what you don't want, though, right there. You don't want an interception because hopefully your punter can put the ball inside the 10 right here and let your defense try to win this football game. Damian Allen sprints to the left, and the receiver coming across the flow. Todd Yoder again, they're trying to get him the ball. This is, Parker. this is the 11th punt for Marin Angel. Mike again took this one too well. It's going to bound at the three, and he can't do anything about it. Into the end zone. Marin Angel's punt into the end zone for a touchback. It'll be first and ten. A warm-up for Monday Night Football with NFL Prime Monday. Mike Tirico, Sterling Sharp, and Joe Theismann that lead you through all the weekend highlights and news plus in-depth features and a preview live from Atlanta of the 49ers-Falcons Monday Night Matchup. NFL Prime Monday, 7.30 on ESPN. Ron Vanderbilt needs a turnover badly. They need to get this football to 6-12 on the clock. They need, and as close to that goal line as they can get it for their offense. 16-33, 155 yards and one interception. Graham straight ahead for six tough yards. That's the real Finklin putting the stop on him. Our first game was, uh, I believe the first game, was Notre Dame here on the Thursday night against Vanderbilt. And Vanderbilt gave a great effort. And they've given a great effort here tonight, Ron, against the Tennessee football team that everybody thought was four touchdowns better than them. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, now this, this defense is sticky. <laughs> No question. Graham, he gets whacked down hard. That's Boykin. Also, Finklin came up, number 22. Real Finklin on the bottom of the stack for Vanderbilt. No game, 34. Ball remains after 26. Graham now 94 yards in the night on 20 carries, and he has uh, the one offensive touchdown for the Volunteers. We're about to go under five minutes to play, and... Tennessee with a third down situation and they need about four, four and a half. Volunteers four or 14 on third down conversion. Manning under pressure, got it away. And on the second effort, that ball was fumbled and picked up by Vanderbilt. Finklin picked up the football as he stretched out and tried to pick up the first down and he just dropped it. And that's what they needed and that's what Woody Woodenhofer got them right there by putting them in that position. The real Finklin. Now watch the second effort, Mike. Under pressure, Peyton Manning. Nash. 
trying to reach out for the first down. And you're right, Ron, just fell out of his hands. It just tumbled right out like you drop a bag of groceries. So, the situation, talk about things getting a little binding. 454 to play in this football game. 14 to 7 Tennessee and Vanderbilt with the ball inside the volunteer 30 yard line. This one is going to be intercepted at the eight yard line as he just threw it away. And Terry Fair, who had two pickoffs against Alabama, gets it. And we have a flag at the line of scrimmage. Let's check it. Holding offense decline. Well, I don't disagree with, with going for everything on first down, but he really put that thing up for grabs. Well, he right? did, and Todd Yoder was double covered, so it was a poor choice to, to go to him. But again, under a lot of a lot of pressure, Damian Allen, you see, he doesn't really have time to throw. The offensive line broke down, and it's uh, good coverage by Tennessee. Terry Fair with the interception. Now it goes right back to what he wouldn't offer. you got to get the ball back again. 446 to play. They had the shot right there, Ron. Tennessee got to keep this football on the ground if they can, as uh, Graham will have three tough ones. Ian Smith comes up to make the stop on him because now that clock, if you're <laughs> your Vanderbilt, is like it's uh, on fast forward. Give him two on the play. Two timeouts left for the Commodores. Tennessee also has two timeouts, but obviously they don't want to stop the clock. Quick pass. That was trapped. Peerless Price, the intended receiver. And I keep talking about this win, and I, you know, we say this not only in Peyton's behalf, or, but also uh, Allen. I think it's gotten much tougher to throw in the second half. You can look at these flags, and they are outstretched, Mike. Most offensive coaches will tell you the rain does not bother them. It's the wind. The wind is uh, something that will cause the ball to flutter a little bit, but you got two quarters where you're going in the face of that wind, and it, mm -hmm. it's difficult to throw the ball tonight. Manning has hit only one of his last eight passes. Third down, line to make is just across the 35. Here comes the blitz, they throw the fade route, and knocked away, Speakman got a hand on it and made the play. Well, Jarrell Finkland was right in there for an interception. He may be feeling like that uh, was interference by the offensive receiver. Mike, there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Let's check with Al Ford here. Lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty is still third down. Whoa. So Vanderbilt gives them another opportunity. Five-yard penalty for offside. Well, you see a lot of movement by Woody Woodenhofer's defense. Now, you watch Peyton Manning. Oh, the linebacker's cheating up. Now he makes the sees. There's no one in center field, so he's going to throw the fade. Now the linebackers, he's given protection. He's given to tell the backs, the receivers what to do. And then throw the fade. I figure Jay Graham's going to get this football. Yep, he gets the pick, goes on the sweep, and I'll tell you, a hearty second effort may have gotten through the tackle of Eric Vance. He may have picked up the first down. It is close. First and 10, Tennessee. A good effort by Jake Graham, you're right. And the second effort, the pitch outside, figuring to get away from all that movement inside. He makes the little stutter step on Eric Vance, and then he gets to the first down marker. And now Jay has limped off the field, and the trainers have come over to, uh, to take a look at him. Michael Rolo and his staff will uh, attend to Graham on the sideline, the senior out of uh, Concord, North Carolina. Running play, still going, taking the pile with him and across the 45 is Eric Lane. Well, Vanderbilt trying to pull that ball out away from Eric Lane. You know, your tailback goes down, Ron. Jay Graham goes down. You bring in a new tailback. David Cutcliffe wants to give that ball to a fullback. Let the new tailback get in a play. 
before he gives him that football and he gives it to Eric Lane. Number five gets pretty good yardage. Boy, he did. It looked like a giant scrum going down the field. He just kept pushing forward. Good for 12 yards. And now that clock continues to run. At 3 minutes 33, 332 and counting. Levine cuts it back inside. He'll have four, maybe five. Duncan combining with Jordan on the stop for Vanderbilt. This is the time of the game where you practice this. You, you know you're going to be up against nine, ten, sometimes eleven people trying to stop the run because you're keeping the clock moving. You want to run the football, and you've got to get good blocking out of your offensive line. You've got to double clutch the football if you're Mark Levine to tailback, and you just want to control the clock, knock out first downs, and get out of here with a victory. Trey Teague, number 70, comes out over the football. Was an offensive tackle. They moved him inside at center. It's been very consistent. This running play, Jeff Coat will put a stop to it. Let's see. That is not enough for the first down. It'll be third down, Tennessee. And they have put it at the 44, and they need about a yard and a half to pick up the first down. Vanderbilt will stop the clock. They'll use one of those two remaining timeouts. Here's what I'm talking about right here, Ron. The safeties are up. You're running against 11 people, and you've got to be able to do that to control the clock in the last three, four minutes of the game. Well, let's take the timeout with them. 2.29 to play. Tennessee holding on to a seven-point margin. Dow Hauer continues to pace in the sideline, and Mike Godfrey made an excellent observation uh, that again tonight, this football team has been oh so close against a very good opponent. They did this against Florida. They did it against Notre Dame, and they're battling Tennessee to the wire tonight. But they're down by seven and running out of time. Straight ahead with a handoff, and with... Again, a second effort. I don't. I still don't think he got it, though. No, he didn't make it this time. Harvey is down at the bottom of the pile. Alfonso was a sophomore out of Daytona Beach, Florida, 6'3", 290. And there's no doubt if I'm Phil Fulmer, what I'd do, I'd punt the football here. Because the way the Vanderbilt's offense is, I don't think they can go the distance on you. Let's see what he's going to do. First thing he's going to do, unless Vanderbilt calls a timeout, he's going to absorb this five-yard penalty. Well, that, that people are booing. This is a good decision by Phil Fulmer. I mean, you're playing to win here. You, you know you can stop their offense unless there's a, a fluke play here that you can be in good shape. Make them go 80 yards. And they just let it run down. And there's your delay penalty, and it came at 141 to play. Turn it down. Well, coming up, the residents in college football school board, Sunshine State Showdown. Heisman waters are muddy just a bit, and the bowl debate. Fifteen Tennessee possessions tonight. This will be the 11th punt. End over end. This is Duke inside the 15 and he's going to be belted out of bounds just across the 20. Now we talk about how good our people are and I'll tell you they're the best and I'll show you how tough they can be. Tim too. Here's a play earlier in the ball game. Watch this pass coming up right here and Tim too has a camera there on the sideline and if you wonder why you're getting a real close look at this play is because well, I'll take a look at it right here. Well, the key, Timmy. Ron, is, the key, Ron, is Tim, too, falls, but look at here. Hey, he's... Mo Davenport and all the bosses back in uh, Bristol are that happy. Camera. That's right. And I'll tell you, this is a two-hit day for him because his North Carolina State team got belted today, and now tonight he got belted. That's mm -hmm. not fair. Protect the equipment. That's the key. Hey, thanks to all our crew as we wrap up this regular season. These guys are outstanding, and this, this whole group kind of like family. Green pass. Donovan lumbers across the 25, close to the 28. Bill Duff making the stop for Tennessee. And now that clock rolling on down. About to go under one minute to play. Gets by one. Will not get by Corey Terry. 
three times Tennessee has sacked him tonight, but none more timely than this one because we're under one minute to play, and he's got third down and about eight yards. It's the old adage. It's tough to throw laying on your back, and Damian Allen has had to rush his throws tonight because of that rush by Tennessee's defense and John Chavis, the coordinator, calling the defenses. They got him again. Way back at the 16-yard line, Jonathan Brown this time. Well, tonight's Visa players of the game are from Tennessee. Tyrone Hines came up with the big fumble recovery, took it for a touchdown, also eight tackles tonight. And from Vanderbilt, Corey Chavis. Two tackles, one interception, and two pass breakups. As part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa, proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities on behalf of these athletes. And, Ron, we talked about Woody Woodenhofer all night, but John Chavis on the other side of the field, the defensive coordinator, and his coaches and, uh, have also had an excellent defensive plan for Tennessee tonight. Both staffs, defensive staffs, it's not just one guy, Woody wouldn't offer when we speak about him. We're talking about that entire coaching staff defensively. Well, 32 seconds left in this one. Tennessee 14, Vanderbilt 7. Last year, as we mentioned, it came down to the wire. It was a 12-7 football game, and Tennessee had to come from behind in that one. And I think one thing goes without saying, after what has happened the last two years, there is a great deal of respect up in Knoxville for this Vanderbilt football team. And there's no doubt, Ron, that Tennessee may have been affected by the Florida-Florida State game today because Florida State win and probably knocks them out of the alliance. And they watched that game this afternoon. And uh... Allen's pass right over the middle. This is Yoder. And Yoder's going to be tackled well short of the first down. Al Wilson will finish him off. And now all Tennessee's got to do is come in and uh, go down on one knee, even if they are afforded that opportunity. 20 seconds left. And the motivation, Ron, the last ball game for Tennessee, of course, losing the Alliance thing, but uh, the seniors and going out with a win, and of course, Vanderbilt, when you play at home in your last ball game, that's the game you remember. And their seniors gave a great effort, both sides tonight. Now Ford has uh, an arm in the air. It comes down. 20 ticks left on that clock. Goes down on one knee, and that'll do it. 16 down to 15. And the Tennessee Volunteers about to wrap this one up as the handshakes begin out on the playing field. And again, our final score, Tennessee 14 and Vanderbilt 7. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Right now, let's join Mike Tirico for the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard. Mike, gentlemen, we enjoyed Saturday.